Hello and Assalamu alaikum. This is the first lecture of Electronics 1 course in which we are going to cover the basics of semiconductor material, covalent bonding, and uh, the introduction to intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor materials. My name is Dr. Amish Shadar and as we have announced earlier that we are following the book entitled Electronics, Devices and Circuit Theory by Boylstead. There are certain reference books uh, which are mentioned in course outline provided to you. So we are going to follow those reference books as well so the introduction to semiconductor materials uh, electronic devices are constructed with semiconductor material and semiconductor materials are special class of elements having conductivity between that of a good conductor and that of an insulator these semiconductor materials are found in different forms. Uh, they can be found as single crystal. Examples are germanium and silicon. And we can construct the compound of uh, these semiconductor materials. The examples are gallium arsenide cadmium sulfide and gallium nitride the diode was discovered in 1939 and the transistor was first constructed in 1947 these solid state devices are constructed with semiconductor material and initially these were uh, constructed with germanium as the base material why they used germanium as base material because it was relatively easy to find and was available in fairly large quantities and it was easy to refine it uh, making the semiconductor material as pure as possible is very important in construction of solid state devices but the problem with germanium was it is less stable due to temperature sensitivity Stability is a major factor we discuss in electronic devices and we are going to discuss this in very detail. So there are certain important parameters against which uh, we select semiconductor material to construct a device. Uh, to name few these are speed availability and stability the speed of the device uh, is dependent on uh, the choice of semiconductor material and that depends on the carrier mobility factor we will define this also for example, gallium arsenide transistor has speed of operation up to 5 times of silicon devices. So if we compare a device of uh, silicon material and a device of gallium arsenide, so gallium arsenide device will operate much faster at least 5 times than the device made with silicon material. The second parameter we consider is availability. 
that that semiconductor material how naturally it is available and how easily it can be purified in this case uh, as an example we have mentioned here that germanium is easily available and easily purified material and also silicon is uh, also an abundant material <coughs> but initially uh, it was difficult to refine silicon material but nowadays since technology advancements uh, we had silicon is more uh, likely to be used as uh, the base device, uh, base material to construct electronic devices. And the, another factor we have is the stability. That means temperature dependency. When temperature rises or drops, the behavior of semiconductor material changes. In this case, uh, if we consider germanium, germanium is more temperature sensitive than other material uh, like gallium arsenide or silicon and that is why the devices constructed with germanium are less stable. For the revision, we can uh, revise few basic things about covalent bonding. The bonding of atom strengthened by sharing of electrons is called covalent bonding. Since silicon, uh, if we consider atom of silicon, it have four valence electrons so it need four more valence electrons to complete its outermost shell. Similarly, germanium have also four valence electrons. So it also need four uh, another electrons to complete its outermost shell. And gallium have three valence electrons while arsenic have 5 valence electrons. So, uh, when compound of these two elements is made, that is gallium arsenide, they share these valence electrons to complete their outermost shell. So, uh, naturally, silicon uh, is uh, and gallium arsenide also they exist in crystalline structure here an example of silicon crystal is shown where a silicon atom shares its four valence electrons with four neighboring atoms to actually complete its outermost shell so sharing one electron with this atom, sharing another electron with this atom and similarly with these atoms, the silicon atom have now 8 electrons revolving around its uh, valence shell. So the bonding of atoms strengthened by sharing of electrons is called covalent bonding. This is called covalent bonding. Similarly, uh, the gallium arsenide structure is shown here where arsenic have 5 valence electrons. It gets 3 uh, electrons from its neighboring atom to complete its outermost shell. Now we can divide semiconductor materials into two generalized categories. These are intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor material. Intrinsic means pure semiconductor materials as they exist in, uh, in nature 
or as they are made as pure as possible through technology so the term intrinsic is applied to any semiconductor material that has been carefully refined to reduce the number of impurities to very low level essentially as pure as can be made through modern technology uh, this is very important factor that uh, we need to uh, purify the electronics material uh, semiconductor material sorry because impurities can vary their behavior uh, actually impurities can vary their natural behavior which we don't want to exist the free electrons in material due to external causes are referred as intrinsic carriers when a material is made pure and at room temperature the free electrons for example are called intrinsic carriers in this table intrinsic carrier ratio is given uh, with comparison to these three main semiconductor materials which we are going to discuss and compare so in case of gallium arsenide we have 1.7 into 10 raised to power 6 carriers per cubic centimeter and in case of silicon we have 1.5 into 10 raised to power 10 carriers per cubic centimeter and in case of germanium we have 2.5 into 10 raised to power 13 uh, carriers or intrinsic carriers these are actually free electrons uh, that exist per cubic centimeter number of carriers uh, or intrinsic carrier is important because as we increase and uh, we have increased number of carrier we have increased current and another factor which we consider in choosing the uh, semiconductor material to construct electronic devices is the speed and speed depends on relative mobility factor of these carriers so this is the number of carrier per cubic centimeter and this factor is this uh, relatively ease how how easily the charge carrier can move within that material so in case of silicon the relative mobility factor is 1500 that is 1500 cubic centimeter square per volt second and in case of germanium this factor is 3900 and in case of gallium arsenide we have 8500 so if we compare the material uh, in case of uh, in terms of relative mobility factor then gallium arsenide devices are much faster than silicon devices but considering other parameters like uh, stability etc so we sometimes we choose silicon material and some in some devices we choose germanium so these things will be clear as we progress through this lecture energy levels Within the atomic structure of each and every isolated atom, there are specific energy levels associated with each shell and 
orbiting electron as uh, electron goes farther from nucleus it have higher energy state so this diagram explain these energy levels there are certain energy levels valence level second level third level and uh, in this direction we have nucleus as we can see the electrons move farther from nucleus it have higher energy level any electron that has left its parent atom has higher energy state than any electron in the atomic structure of course an electron if that absorbs some energy and leave the parent atom and becomes a free electron or free carrier that will have a higher energy state than uh, compare uh, as compared to the electrons revolving around the atom so in terms of energy level diagram if we compare insulators semiconductors and conductor material in case of insulator we can see the energy uh, gap or band gap energy is quite high as compared to these two materials an electron in valence band of silicon must absorb more energy than one in valence band of germanium so we will explain this first we have to see the difference between insulator semiconductor and conductor in terms of energy level diagram now this band is conduction band and this band is valence band in case of insulator we can see the gap between conduction and valence band is more than 5 electron volt that is higher than the other two material what does it mean it means that the electrons residing in valence band of an insulator must absorb the energy of 5 electron volt or greater to jump to conduction band that is why at room temperature insulators have very few or almost no electron in conduction band in case of semiconductor materials this band gap energy which we uh, call eg is uh, less than the insulator but it is of course greater than conductor it means the electrons in valence band of semiconductor material must absorb this much amount which is eg to jump from valence to conduction band and in case of conductors the valence band and conduction band both are uh, both are actually overlap so electrons in valence band are uh, can be considered as in conduction band so it means that these electrons need very less or no energy to jump from valence to conduction band that is why conductors at room temperature uh, conduct charge uh, conduct electric current with these charge carriers now if we compare the band gap energy of these three silicon uh, these three semiconductor materials which are 
silicon, germanium and gallium arsenide. For uh, silicon, we have band gap energy of 1.1 electron volt. In case of <coughs> germanium, we have 0.67 electron volt and in case of gallium arsenide, we have this band gap energy of 1.41 electron volt. That means in case of germanium material, the electrons need only 0.67 electron volt to jump from valence to conduction band. And earlier we said germanium is a temperature sensitive device. That means if temperature rises, uh, then the energy absorbed by these valence electrons will be uh, enough to jump from valence to conduction band in case of germanium as compared to silicon and gallium arsenide. So it means the external energy if we consider it in the form of temperature then for less temperature rise germanium devices are actually conducting more current than silicon and gallium arsenide so this will affect their stability but again as germanium are more sensitive to temperature we can use these uh, the property of their sensitivity in constructing of different temperature sensitive devices for example any temperature sensitive sensors so in summary uh, of this discussion here an electron in valence band of silicon must absorb more energy uh, then one in valence band of germanium to become a free carrier. We can see for silicon it's 1.1 electron volt and for germanium it's 0.67 electron volt. Similarly, an electron in valence band of gallium arsenide must gain more energy than one in silicon or germanium to enter conduction band. So in this case, gallium arsenide devices are more temperature stable as compared to germanium and silicon. Now, uh, uh, definition of extrinsic, uh, extri extrinsic semiconductor material. Previous discussion was for intrinsic semiconductor material or in other words pure semiconductor material a semiconductor material that has been subjected to doping process is called an extrinsic semiconductor material doping means adding impurity and while we add impurity, we change the properties of that semiconductor material. In generally, uh, generally there are two extrinsic material which we use to construct semiconductor devices. These are N-type material and P-type materials. Both N-type and P-type materials are formed by adding a predetermined number of impurity atoms to uh, any semiconductor base. Since silicon is used most uh, frequently, that is why we have written here the silicon base. So. Uh, extensive semiconductor materials are constructed by adding some impurity atoms to the base silicon uh, material which actually 
चेंज इट्स बिहेवियर और कैरेक्टरिस्टिक नाउ हाउ डू कंस्ट्रक्ट द एन टाइप मेटीरियल एन एन टाइप मेटीरियल इज क्रिएटेड बाई इंट्रोड्यूसिंग इम्प्योरिटी एलिमेंट दैट है फाइव वेलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच वी कॉल पेंटावेलेंट टू द बेस ऑफ सिलीकॉन मेटीरियल The examples of these pentavalent uh, atoms or elements are antimony, arsenic, and phosphorus. Diffuse impurities with five valence electrons are called donor atom. Now, if we see the crystalline structure of a silicon material, now if we add and antimony atom to this crystalline structure of silicon this antimony atom have five valence electron it will make covalent bonding with four neighboring silicon atom and we have a one free valence electron from antimony atom so in other sense this antimony atom have donated one free electron to this whole material that is why we call the five uh, the elements with five valence electrons as donor atoms now four covalent bonds are still present four covalent bond bonds with the neighboring elements uh, neighboring atoms of silicon the fifth electron due to impurity atom that is antimony which is unassociated with any particular covalent bond becomes a free charge carrier now n type materials are constructed with pentavalent atoms while uh, when we add them to the base silicon material what uh, these pentavalent atoms will do they will actually donate free electrons to the material and free electrons are free charge carriers that means in n type material we have electrons as majority charge carriers p type materials uh, are formed by doping pure semiconductor materials with trivalent atoms pure semiconductor materials can be germanium or silicon and trivalent atoms can be from uh boron gallium or indium elements so in uh, uh, this diagram if you see if we add a trivalent atom to silicon crystalline structure so it will make uh, three covalent bonding with three neighboring atom while there is a deficiency of electron here which uh, is needed to make covalent bond with fourth neighboring atom so deficiency of electron uh, is called hole hole means positive charge carrier so here we have a deficiency of electron which is hole or positive charge carrier the diffuse impurity with three valence electrons are called acceptor atoms why we call them as acceptor atom because here we have deficiency of electron so it is ready to accept 
an electron from the neighboring atoms. That is why we call trivalent atoms as acceptor atoms. So there is now an insufficient number of electrons to complete the covalent bonds. The resulting vacancy is called a hole and is represented by a small cir uh, circle or a plus sign indicating the absence of negative charge. So P-type materials are constructed by adding trivalent impurity to pure semiconductor materials which actually make a void or uh, a deficiency of electron here uh, that means it is ready to accept an electron from its neighboring atom so holes are majority charge carriers in p type material that means they carry a positive charge of course absence of negative charges positive charge Now, if we define uh, electrons versus whole flow, since we call uh, electrons as negative charge carriers and uh, holes as positive charge carrier, so if you want to show their movement, we can show this uh, their movement with this diagram. In an n-type material, the electrons are called majority charge carriers and holes are minority charge carriers. While in P-type materials, the holes are majority charge carriers while electrons are minority charge carriers. So if you see uh, in A figure, that is a boron which is an acceptor atom it makes covalent bonding with three neighboring silicon atoms and we have a deficiency of electrons electron here it can accept electron from any of its neighboring atom so let's say this electron from this silicon atom have gained sufficient energy to jump from uh, its uh, it's actually uh, valence shell to conduction shell or it can be if it can become a free carrier it will move from here and jump to this deficiency that is filling this deficiency with an electron now this electron have jumped from this silicon atom to this boron uh, to complete the covalent bonding of this boron atom it will create a deficiency over here as it is shown here now we have a deficiency of electron here and since electron is moving to fill up the deficiency here as it is shown in figure C now we see hole is here and electron is here so what does it mean it means the positive charge carrier or hole has traveled from uh, boron to this silicon atom or you can say in this uh, direction from right to left and electron have moved from left to right So we are going to uh, discuss the construction of uh, semiconductor devices. Uh, the first device is uh, semiconductor diode with this N-type and P-type material. So this concludes our first lecture of introduction to semiconductor materials.